me, Shela Shira, across all my social media platforms so you know what to do. So right now we have an interview coming up by two amazing guests. So first of all, I thought they were due and then I was bombarded by the surprise that they are individual artists doing an amazing job in the industry. So without further ado... Yo. Jumbles. Yeah. <laughs> the flavor MC. Okay. Yep. Static Supreme. Static Supreme. Okay, those are very uh, different uh, names with different uh, vibe in it. Why static? Because it's static in chemistry means something different. Yes. And now we are in artistic aspect of music, uh, basically hip hop music. Why did you go for static? Um, uh, I ha well, <laughs> I always t uh, stumble a bit when, I, I t uh, when I'm about to say this because okay. uh, it, it's uh, I'm a bit uh, anxious about it, mm -hmm. but uh, the name Static uh, came from. Uh, you remember when Lil Wayne did a song called Lollipop? Oh yes, like a lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. The guy who sang the chorus was actually called Static Major, mm -hmm. and um, it's just someone I identify with a lot, mm -hmm. and um, that's where the name originated from. Right. To be honest with you. Okay, yeah. so for flavor, when I hear the word flavor, I'm just feeling like you're adding some little bit of some sauce, sauce in some, some meals spice. and all that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so um, was that what you went for when you went for flavor as uh, your artistic name? Well, eventually, <laughs> it's also eventually. Uh, okay. But what, what caught my ear first was um, Craig Mack's um, mm. flavor in your ear. Mm. I don't know if... if you can recall the jam. Here comes the brand new flavor in your ear. I'm seeing Reggie's to that yeah. song. Okay. So um, <laughs> when, when I had that jam, like mm -hmm. it just stuck with me. And I felt like I needed to replicate that mm -hmm. through all my my musical endeavors, my musical journey. So okay. yeah, that's exactly what I'm up to now. All right. Mm -hmm. So for people back at home, uh, you're meeting this individual. If it's for your first time, uh, you'll be surprised because first of all, when I met you today, because we met today, and uh, it's your your vibe is so different compared to what I see in the musical video. Mm -hmm. You look more composed, more of um, what's the word? You guys sound deep even in person. So mm -hmm. probably you can tell us. Uh, the journey from uh, the point where by just before you became musicians, what were you doing in the aspect of that? Oh, uh, okay. For me, just before I, you know, went into music seriously, I was doing my CPA. Um, Wait. Yeah. Uh, if you're not supposed to be like here, you're <laughs> supposed to be in the bank, you know, the guy behind uh, I know, right? Dating down some yeah. checks and everything else. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. It's just something that I've had uh, mm -hmm. for a long time, passion for music, mm -hmm. you know. And the more I learned, the more I went to school, uh, the more I I realized I can be able to turn this into something. You get, like, my, my lessons in school, I, I learned a bit differently. You get, like, how can I translate this into real life? And after that is where I started now going into music seriously and now this is... When did you start doing music in a professional uh, way? 2017. 2017. 2017. And uh, yeah. so far compared to you seated in a class studying accounts, what, what is the feeling or what, rather what is, how do you feel being in the zone of doing music compared to doing your initial profession which was accounts? I'm at home. Uh, that's just the best description I mm -hmm. can give. Right now, um, I'm at home. I'm where I want to be, where I need to be. Yeah. Serena, in music, you at home? I am at home. Okay, I'm so static. Home. Yes. You know where we're headed to? I do. Yes. So tell us, Flavor uh, uh, here was uh, an accountant, or brother will be in the seated other chair of a banker doing other accounts matters. What about you? If you are not doing music right now, what would you be doing? Well, I, w I was going to become a priest. So I was Wait, okay. You were to be a priest? Yeah. Uh, right. I was in the seminary, junior seminary, for about four years. Four good years. Yeah, and then uh, the calling left me. What, what led you to uh, the decision of you choosing to just be in priesthood? Well, I've always wanted to live a life of service, I guess. Mm. And uh, priesthood made sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, being a Catholic, I guess, since I grew okay. up, uh, I was in Catholic school. Mm -hmm. It just made sense. I felt like that was actually what I was going to do, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I totally got disoriented once I went into uh, the seminary. Mm -hmm. And when I came out, I wanted to do psychology. So I from seminary now to sec try 
wanting to be a psychologist. Because yeah, I figured if I cannot serve, mm. I can offer my service. Services. And somewhat in a similar way, but mm -hmm. different uh, calling. So um, I did uh, my undergraduate, mm. and uh, one year into my master's, I quit. All right. For music. For music. Yeah. You guys have done a lot for music. Uh, it's been a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I look at it, because uh, I started late. Mm. I had already done so much before I had to drop everything and then now start music. And music is a, is a, pro, is a process. Mm. So um, it was very challenging, uh, very defining as well. And um, a lot of fundamentals of who I am got really cemented at that moment because mm. um, a lot of things were shaken up mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I actually outed myself in saying I want to do music and I don't want to do uh, psychology now. Okay, so first of all, as I said earlier on, at first I thought you guys were do absolutely listening to your jump through Wakilisha. And it is amazing jump because I saw it and I could not stop the replay button. Okay. Uh, how about you tell us, uh, for how long have you been separately doing art before you two came together for different projects in music? Oh, uh, well, Supreme had been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I'd done one two projects 2014 2013 but mm -hmm. they never really uh, i wasn't really there i wasn't in that space to really pursue it mm -hmm. you know 100 percent uh so now 2017 is when i started doing my stuff mm -hmm. um 2018 released my mixtape and all that then um actually 2017 is now when we met mm -hmm. yeah that's where we met with, with supreme um and started doing music because for a while he'd been telling me you know hey bro you should come through we do something we do something and you know we'd be meeting up we'd be meeting up but i guess when the time just came mm -hmm. it just came and we started with Blanc 2017 right yeah. yeah and that was it we went from there from there yeah. now so uh static you have two eps if i'm not wrong uh one ep a couple of mixtapes mm. i have a lot of music and unfortunately, it was all over the place. I just used Were to you record. still doing music while it's still in seminary, Chinia Maj? Uh, yeah, I can <laughs> tell you, uh, well, let me tell you something I didn't say. Yes. When I was in school, high school, I wrote something. Mm. I wrote a song. It wasn't serious. Uh, years later, when I was actually doing my master's, is when I found a beat to go with that track. Mm. But guess what? The song actually predicted what I was going through at that particular moment. Mm. <coughs> And that's the first time I took my music seriously because I think I saw something in it that I'd never seen before. I was writing my future and I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. So uh, music became very personal to me. And that's when I decided, you know, I, I guess I need to give everything up mm -hmm. and give this a bit of my time and uh, attention. Okay, so if you approximately you've been into the game more way longer than Flavor and definitely as you say that you held his hand through this whole process and everything else. So currently we are still in mooning of... Uh, Hippo parties, Kantana, Kantai, sorry, and uh, there's a post that was kept up by Calligraph Jones on his IG handle, and he speaks of the media portraying him as an alcoholic instead of just looking into the aspect of his music. What is your angle on that, or what is your take on the aspect that is the media just uh, portraying the negative aspect of artists, or are they given limelight when they just die? And what would you think would be the reason to why they would do that? Well, I think uh, artists are very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but uh, for, for you to be an artist, sometimes you have to say things that other people will not say, so mm -hmm. that other people can identify with you. Okay. For you to have the courage and uh, the tenacity to be able to say some things, mm -hmm. you have to be bent in a bit uh, awkward ways. Mm -hmm. So we tend to be on the fringes of uh, society. Mm -hmm. And it can be very hard uh, sometimes to deal and cope. Being an artist, there's a stigma associated with it. Uh, everyone tells you, you tell someone you're an artist, they're like, mm. uh, dude, are, you, are you making money? Mm. Are you, uh, yes, uh, yeah. And it's, it's very hard. Yeah. I, I don't know why in Kenya we have that situation, but we are not respected. People will be like, ah, oh, dude, you're so talented. But you tell him, okay, you can buy my create creativity yes. and people are like ah, uh, and, uh, uh, you get you so have a youtube channel we can check it out on youtube probably <laughs> you know it's it, as much as it, it, it takes a while before yeah. that translates to anything mm, for now it's just uh views, views and clouds, yes. you know yeah um it's it's more than that mm -hmm. uh, i feel like i'm i'm more mature and you've invested in your and music I've invested so much yeah. so i i i'm a bit i'm very picky with my music i i try to 
tend to it and care mm. about it because I've, it cost me so much. At the end of the day, it's a business. And it is a business. Yeah. And uh, I, I was stuck in the music industry for a while before I got into the music business. And it took away before I could even tell the difference. Mm. So there's a lot of education that needs to happen. And when you look at artists like Kantai, mm. I mean, to just emulate one side of him, uh, I don't think the uh, media has been known to be fair. Okay. They will pick on what is sensational mm. and what sells. Mm. But there's so much to a character. And sometimes people don't want to take the time to find out what else is what behind else? this person. Okay, there's also the notion of uh, being gentlemen, being men. We are not outspoken on our struggles, and it gets even way harder if you're an artist. And if you portray your struggles, if you're going through a challenge, through social media, even if you reach out, you are having the fear that probably this person will uh, give the information outside there, and it will uh, damage my image, because people are expecting you to be... You know, uh, having all figured it out, you're not supposed to be in this mess. We are all humans at the end of the day. What is your approach for fellow artists who are in these uh, struggling moments in terms, even if it's in music, and they're looking for an outlet which might not be the best way, probably it could be drugs or any form of other way which is that inflict pain in them or even people surrounding them. What will be the message? Uh, I'll just say the company you keep, uh, I think it just starts from there. Because mm -hmm. for every person, you're, it's been said for mm -hmm. a long time that you know, you're a summation of the five, six people you hang out with most. And if the guys you hang hang out with don't have the same vision or ambition as you, then chances are you can go sideways very, mm -hmm. very easily. Like for me, I felt like when I met Supreme, I met someone like-minded, you know, like if I'm messing up, I mm. trust Supreme will tell me, oh, flavor you, is really out. Okay. Yeah, come do this. And, and I trust that I'll do the same for him. So I think it comes down to that, just trying to stay grounded. And also keeping your personal matters personal, doing mm. your best to do that will also help. Yeah. Okay, now to the reason why you guys are here. It's yeah. launching your I hope we're not too serious jobs. for, yeah. for yeah. Yeah. No, you're not. Okay. We're okay. not. Okay. We're okay. not. But uh, <laughs> apparently that session was quite yeah. kind of serious. But now well. let's uh, loosen up. So right here, right about now, you guys are here for the launch of your new music, which is known as Wakilisha. Yeah. Tell us more about the theme behind uh, the sound and the fact that you guys, uh, I believe you are signed under Lions of Kajado of Kajiado, Records. Yes. So tell yeah. us more about that. Um, Wakilisha is, is, is just a, a jam, just a jam for guys to vibe to and yes. just talking about lanes, mm -hmm. just staying in your lane mm -hmm. and you know, just focusing on your own and trying not to, you know, focus on the noise, blocking out the noise, making sure you get your own. Because right now, man, there's too much noise and guys are all over. But if you can stick to your lane, it's crazy. Uh, before we go to static, and yeah. he gives us uh, his theme uh, or what he felt was uh, the fact that he was adding value to this jam, Wakilisha. So the, the video aspect of it, you yeah. sound way different. You're you guys are very authentic in your own uh, spitting of bars and lines. But there's one thing. So what? Who's the video director and the costume designer? Because you have a bandana all over. Yeah. There's no shirt and everything else. So I'm questioning. Yeah. Uh, what was the vibe behind uh, the designing for the costume for the video? Uh, we wanted something bright and you know outgoing mm -hmm. and um <coughs> Kevo, uh sorry in fact <laughs> big chief oh, okay, our big producer chef. All right. got us this uh, awesome chains mm -hmm. um some Maasai type of chains and mm -hmm. they were really really uh, there's something to work with and so the, Ma some, the Maasai culture you know, is connected to those of the records I guess well, it's because <laughs> Kajado, yeah. uh, where, we where we shot the video, yeah. is prominently uh, Maasai land. Uh, yeah. yes, and uh, just being out there in the field, we were like, uh, let's go a bit crazy. Mm. Um, there's, there's an aspect about letting yourself go that even as an artist, you need to learn. Mm. Because when the camera turns on, uh, it's a different persona. And so getting to just let ourselves loose was a big part of this. Mm. You get and uh, just enjoy the song. Because we, we, I have been recording for a while and he has been recording also for a minute, but we need to create some personas that are, there's a, some long, long, longevity to it. Sorry, I can't say that right. <laughs> uh, there's, some, there's some time to it, okay. there's stability to it. Mm -hmm. But it's something that really needs to come natural. And Wakilisha really allowed us to get ourselves into our element. 
Mm -hmm. I, if I can yeah. say that. Get yeah, into the zone. Into the zone. All right. Exactly. So, Wakilisha, it's a good vibe kind of music for all you guys back at home who can enjoy this particular jam whereby DJ Rajis will be playing it in a little bit. But before that, I would like you guys to tell me, or other people back at home, uh, what are the pen, how you handle your financial aspect because Y254 is a youthful channel and people who majorly want to venture into the music scene or are still in the music music scene but they are having challenges in terms of budgeting for their videos the audio production you can mention that let me just let you mention that before i ask this another question that i would really love for you guys to get into it wow here's the thing uh -huh. uh, he plays a very functional role in our because we are independent artists yes but i think of, of us as red man and method man mm. because i i just there's a good energy i get from him and good feedback and he handles the audio mm -hmm. i handle the video because when we, we do a normal a show called friday fight night mm. where we release our song every week Okay. Yeah, because you've just so dropped it there. You'll also talk about that Friday night, yeah. yes. So uh, within Friday Fight Night, I do the videos. And I do uh, basically everything in the video. And he does the audio. You use uh, ca phone, your phone, I camera? Use my f yeah, I was using the... I've been using different phones. The Mate 9, the S7. Because yeah, using the resources phones that, that you really have. Are good. And okay. I, I always tell guys, just be innovative. Mm. It doesn't have to be top-notch quality. Just put some time into your work and learn some skills. Mm -hmm. It goes beyond just uh, being an artist and now I do that and rap. Mm. And uh, what happened is he helps with the audio aspect of this because we record at his place. Mm. And then I basically talk about the, the video part. And it helped really uh, facilitate the Friday Fight Night uh, to have a life of its own. Okay. And we could basically shoot and upload whenever we wanted. Mm. But after being signed, uh, Kevo basically took over... Took over everything. Everything. The for the professional look. Because we have two kind of perspectives. Mm. Friday Fight Night is very raw, mm. but uh, from lands of Kajodo, we are very structured mm. and uh, it's very mainstream. And that was the approach to it. So Friday Fight Night. Friday Fight Night. Yes, it's yeah. basically on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Oh, definitely. So people m back at home can make sure you reach out and see their content, which is totally freestyle of good rap music. Cindy, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So probably you can tell us, uh, people back at home, what can they add value in? How can they add value into your music? Oh, what kind of help would you like them to give? Uh, what would you call it? Help. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Talk about investment. Investment, okay. Because uh, I believe our music speaks for itself. Yeah, accountant, I'm your guest. So it's all about <laughs> investment, all right? Yeah. So our music speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we put in the time, the effort, the energy such that now it's it's just to take it a notch higher and uh, i believe for anyone who sees the vision and you know who is a part who wants to be a part of it mm -hmm. you're welcome you know as long as it's a workable relationship and all that we are always open and mm -hmm. we are open to just doing music mm -hmm. just producing music that's the main thing mm -hmm. let it not be politics or whatever just music and all that's right. it yeah so probably you can tell us pia uh what kind of uh, the people you look up to and yeah. additionally to that is how would you like people back at home to view uh, Flavor or Supreme in terms, of the mu in terms of the music that you're doing as individuals? Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you can take it, take it. Take it. Yeah. yeah, so before you before even address that, there's a question you, you asked and I, I didn't really address. And you said uh, ways that we financially get by and yeah. just find things to do to, to help uh, facilitate yes, the career. Yes, right? that's true. And I think it's a very important thing because it's basically what stops many from moving forward. Okay. Um, I just, as a man, I realize we have to do a lot of things. I am also a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. uh, Missy Kotax, please right. call me up for your tattoos. <laughs> Some of you guys have tattooed. Uh, I tattooed Cream, I tattooed uh, Patrix, Joey mm -hmm. Mudengi, a couple of other guys. Okay. And uh, I also do digital artwork. Mm -hmm. I've been doing posters and stuff for events. And a lot of other things. I think as a man, you just find ways to just provide. And also it helps w if, you, if, you're, if you have a partner okay. with you. I, I think uh, music is not just your own thing. You really need support and people to encourage you. That is very true. Support yeah. and people to encourage you. You can use Camera for uh, sending all of your social media. Yeah. Give us your social media yeah. handles. Oh, now people can get you. Thing, back just home. to add to what she said. Even if you don't have money, you have time. If you, you don't have, have money, yourself, you yeah. got time, so, so you have to create time for what you love. That. So yeah. social media coming through on Camera 4, um, and then after that we spit some buzz. Social media, yes. uh, that's my Instagram. Instagram. Uh, Facebook is Jute Jipelava. 
uh, YouTube, Zipelada Music, Audio Mark, Zipelada. Yeah, you get the drift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Static Supreme, Google me. Yeah. You'll see something. <laughs> that's the easiest way <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Static Supreme, that is as simple as that. So they will be dropping their new jam known as Wakilisha right here on hashtag Hip Hop Thursday. You only see it right here. For the first time, it only happens that here. Hashtag Keep Up Thursday across on Twitter handle Michelle Asher across all my social media platforms. So, guys, take it away. Wakilisha. Wakilisha. Wakilisha.